Good morning and welcome to LU Life Church, your global spiritual community portal. And this is your host, Reverend Dr. Donicia Palmer. It's so good to be alive. And here we are on the second Sunday in January. Already it's the 16th day. We are halfway, midway in the month of the new year. How fast, how quickly time is speeding away. As is usual, we start our segment by taking a deep, grateful breath, grateful that life has taken us to this very moment in time. Let us do that together. And on the exhale, let us say thank you. Thank you. So our subject our subject topic today, yeah? Our segment topic, you are what you eat. You are what you eat consistently and regularly. You are what you eat as just a quote is an unfinished sentence. You are what you eat, just saying it like that is incorrect to some extent. You are what you eat, how much or how little? I'm taking my reference text today from uh, an old writing, um, the book of St. John, chapter 4, verse 32. It is speaking here of the Master Jesus when he said this sentence, and most people might have overlooked it. But I'm taking our reference today in terms of what we eat, how much, and how little, and the good it does to our body. When Jesus spoke of the meat he ate that the people knew not of. Let me say one thing straight <laughs> at the beginning. He was not speaking about flesh, okay? So that's out the picture. When he was talking about meat to eat, you know not of. And what I'm talking about today has got nothing to do with us eating flesh, nor vegetables come for that matter. But I'm making it clear, meat is not speaking of flesh. Is that right? Okay. Furthermore, that you know not of, did not imply that we cannot or should never know. It just simply means that at that time they were not privy to, okay? So you can know if you follow on to know. It's written somewhere else in scripture and in um, our text. I also wish to note something that fresh thought life words, which is what we the segments are really about fresh thought, life word, are soul stirrings, soul enhancing medicine. Of course, you will have, you know, they will have huge impact on other parts of your life, on your spiritual life, on your economic life, even your physical and mental experiences. For the better, I might add, it will have better on your spiritual experience. It will have better on your economic experience. It will even have physical, yes, you will see physical changes and will give you mental experiences. But fresh thought life words are mainly soul, soul medicine to stir your soul, okay? They are for your soul. So you could say really, I'm a soul doctor or a soul therapist or soul surgeon, soul technician. Call it what you will. Fresh thought life words is life for the soul. Soul medicine. So, okay, moving on to today's segment. We are what we eat, how much and how little. All right. Um, you're what you eat physically. Yes, in general. Morally, mentally and consciously. So that's where soul comes in when we talk about our consciousness, our conscious awareness. You have heard the saying, um, I, I have everything I could ever need, but it just feels like there's a little hole missing. Um, what they're talking about probably there is soul. The, <clears throat> the amount you eat or feed on or what you feed your soul on matters, okay? It matters to how you experience life. Most wish to have a, you know, a wonderful life. Like, 
a big mansion, and many do have a mansion, but never live in those rooms. I say, <laughs> what's the point? What's the point of owning a castle if you only live in one or two rooms? It is the same as the person who only has two rooms and dream of having more. Where is your focus? That's what matters. How much time is spent absorbing, feeding your soul? What are you feeding your soul? How much or how little? Today we are speaking about soul food. Food most know nothing about. This is what the scripture was, was saying. I have food to eat that you know not of. So food, soul food, most people know nothing of. <clears throat> If you want to know, really, 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 really know more, book a one-on-one -on -one appointment with me at lulifechurch at gmail.com or you can leave your details in the comment box. Soul health matters most. I'll repeat that. Soul health matters most. Most are starving their souls. When our soul is starving, when we are starving ourselves, starving our souls, we become weak or timid weak in fact many are unborn spiritually they are you know i don't want to use that word but people might say stupid unlearned terrified bullies terrorist without even knowing some are living from their soul already how do we know they feed on kindness they thrive on love they live in peace and joy and are growing in bliss these are those, these are those, um, you know, <clears throat> like the tractor misses, you know, and they're growing out through the concrete, or you see it thing growing on the rooftops. Yes, they are growing in love, they're growing in peace, they're growing in joy, they're growing in bliss. You see, what you focus on grows. Can, can you write that down? What you focus on grows up or down what i mean by that is if you focus on your fears illness lack negatives you're going to grow more of the same hence down focus on life love light health goodness peace wisdom kindnesses you grow more of the same you see, most care only about living when they think they are dying. Most treasure their relationships only when it's breaking up. Most focus on the things said to them that they hated. They focus on the bad news, mistakes, etc. Eating up all that mess and filling up their insides with grime till they become bunged up. Not you, not now, not ever. Take a breath. Take the breath, for instance. How often do you focus on the breath? Most don't even focus on it. But the more we focus on it, is the more of itself it lends to us. You need to note this. The breath. The more you focus on it, the more of it it lends itself. Jesus knew about this, yeah? He preached breathology. The more, <clears throat> more than anything, you know, um, I live from that place and I teach from that place. If you want to experience life to the full, hmm, you got you to gotta really be focusing on the breath. You see, within the breath is the wisdom of the ages. Within that breath, that comes to us, comes to us maybe on the count of seven each time. So it's best to be a constant observer of it so we can learn her secrets. Ah, but not to gain, but for love. So today, my friends, family and colleagues, set your attention on the breath. It is life's way of feeding you. It is meat for life. For me, for you, and for the world. Why did Jesus speak these words in the first instance? 
what was it all about? You see, that day, um, <clears throat> he and his disciples um, had, had gone to this place. I think it was called Samaria. And they needed to go away to get some food. But there was no food in that place. So he sat by the well, you know, being tired. He sat there. And on returning, they found him just as they left him, seated by the side of this well. And he had not eaten. Well, he had not eaten physical food anyway. And so when they inquired, as why, why, why didn't you eat? He then said, you know, I have had meat to eat that you know not of. So here comes this word. That was where this, the scriptural text was taken from. I have meat to eat that you know not of. You see, during this time at the well, he had met a woman. Um, a woman of the world, and I won't go into the story here, so no gossip today, okay? Except to say this, um, he had given her some of his soul medicine that caused her to leave happy, joyful, leaping for joy, and she also left her water pot. It's recorded, and she went away, she shared her joy, and it caused so many people, other people, to become interested in what she was saying because they had seen her changed life from what was said to her on that day. How many of us, even listening to this segment, having listened to many segments, heard many sermons, read many books, have taken many courses, have remained unchanged. It is always good to allow what we what we eat to nurture our soul, to nurture our mind, and to bring about that transformation, that change that we need. So she went away singing happy and released. I wonder what he had told her. What he had told her inside, that inside was a well. Remember last week I spoke about the well of wellness? He told her there was a well inside of her that if you could drink off from this well, you will never thirst again. And he opened her, her inside to such a, a, a stream within her that it released her. It awakened her conscious, uh, yeah, he awakened her consciousness and, and it shifted. It shifted her perception in such a way that the way she saw her was seeing herself. Her perception suddenly changed. Her situation changed. Um, there were more possibilities, more probabilities to now her circumstances and new possibilities. Just in that conversation, he had fed her soul. Her liberation was his joy. Her liberation was his food, his physical hunger, and her physical thirst was met. What in fact was suspended in that moment and the joy the joy of waking up the joy of reawakening the joy of enlightenment had filled both their lives and so today my friends you also can live this joy and delight every single day the joy and the freedom you seek is already within so in your life today Arise and be healed today. Be filled. Be totally loved in this moment by the knowing that the life that lives you is the very life of God. This is your LU Life Church. And this is the Reverend Dr. Donny Sipom. I pray today that you would have received something some insight into the knowing that the well within you is the well of life, which is the very life of God, which can liberate you. It will liberate you when you see that, when you focus on that, when you allow your mind to feed on that. It shifts your perception. It brings you into the reality and the truth of what is possible. Thank you for joining me today. To donate, please click on the PayPal link in the description box below or go directly to the PayPal website and make your kind donations to lulifechurch at gmail.com. A grateful soul is always one that gives. And we are also always grateful here to read your kind comments. And we appreciate your kind thumbs up, which is a sign that you are here. 
Today, I wish you a beautiful rest of the day and a wonderful week to come. Amen. Amin. Ashe.